Hi guys, welcome to my studio. I'm Sasha, I'm a fashion designer and teacher and today I have a tutorial and a pattern for you showing you how to make these fab wide leg and adjustable palazzo pants that I'm wearing. How to sew palazzo pants, a step-by-step -step tutorial with sewing pattern. If you'd like to sew along, you can get the pattern in my Etsy store. I'll pop the link below. I would say these trousers are an intermediate make, so they're not super complicated. We're not going to be putting in a zip or a fly. They have a drawstring, which is a little bit easier. And of course, I'll be guiding you through every step of the process in this video. But I would say that you may find them a little bit challenging as an absolute beginner or if this is your first garment. So let's take a closer look at some of the details on the trousers so we know where we're headed before we get started. Palazzo pants details. So I've just put these high up on the stand so we can take a closer look at some of the details and just get our head around them before we start sewing. So probably the biggest unique feature of these trousers is that we have this really neat flat tailored front. And then if we turn it around to the reverse, We've got that amazing drawstring back that allows the trousers to be adjustable to a range of different sizes. So I absolutely love this feature because it means if you're a little bit like me and your weight can fluctuate throughout the month, then you know these trousers are always gonna fit you, they're always gonna make you feel great, and you're never gonna have any pinching or bagging. It's just a pair of tailored trousers that are always exactly the right size. I like to use a ribbon for my drawstring. I think it adds a nice little extra touch. And I also like to leave it long. I think it kind of adds to the kind of swooshy feel of the piece. The ribbons that I've used here are one meter each in length, but if you prefer a shorter tie, so that would be a smaller bow at the back, you can reduce that if you'd like to. As well as the ribbon tie, there's also actually a small amount of elastic hidden in the waistband as well. It's just three inches long, and you can see when I pull that there, we've just got that extra little bit of bounce. And what that does is it means that you can get the trousers really nice and tight around your waist. And it also has a little bit of flexibility and a little bit of movement as you're going about your day. So by having that little bit of elastic there, it means that we've always got a look that's gonna be sharp and it's gonna be comfortable. Moving around to the front. So I've just gone for a very classic tailored look here. So we've got a nice wide flattering waistband. We've also got these deep wide pleats on the front. Again, those are really flattering, especially across the stomach area. So then if we have a look at our pocket to the side, so this is slightly different to the type of pocket that you'd find in a classic pair of tailored trousers. I've gone for this soft U-shape at the bottom, which I think keeps it quite modern and fresh. And they're actually incredibly easy to put in. This version, I've added a little bit of lining to the pockets as well. You don't need to do this with all types of fabric. I'm gonna explain that a little bit more at the next stage. You'll also notice that there's no side seam to these trousers. So it's one continuous piece that runs from the back of the trouser right the way around to the front. So that is our main piece that you'll see on the pattern. And then we've got our pocket pieces and our waistband. And because we don't have that seam, that makes this a really great pattern to use if you have a fabric that's got a really big print on it. So if you have something that's got maybe like really giant spots or huge flowers. And sometimes if you're working with a pattern, it's lots of smaller pieces, you can end up cutting through the design and you kind of lose a lot of the essence of what that print is about. So if you do have a really bold print like that, let's say the giant polka dots, it means you can run it the whole way around the leg without breaking through the design. So let's jump onto the table and start talking about what type of fabrics are going to be the most suitable. Fabric choices. For this project, you'll need your main fabric, which is going to form the outside of your trousers. If you're using a slightly heavier weight fabric, you will need a very small amount of lining. I'll explain that in a minute. You'll need some interfacing or fusing to use in your waistband, and you'll also need some kind of tape or ribbon, and that's going to form that lovely drawstring at the back. In terms of fabrics that will work for these trousers, the most important thing is that you pick something which isn't too heavy. Because we do have that drawstring at the back, there's gonna be quite a lot of gathers there. So you don't want something, say like a really heavy tweed, which when you gather it, it's gonna become 
become very bulky and that will be quite unflattering to the silhouette. So you can see actually on the trousers that I'm wearing at the moment. So these were actually one of the first prototypes that I made for this design. And if you have a look at the back, I don't have the drawstring on this, I just have the elastic, but you can see just how much fabric you have in that back there and how it forms into those gathers. I'm gonna be using this really lovely chartreuse wool. So it is a wool fabric and it is a suiting fabric, but it's also quite fine. If I hold it a little bit closer, you can see it moves very softly. It's got quite a lot of drape to it. So that means that it's soft rather than stiff. And also you can see if I gather it up here and then turn it to the side, I can do that without creating a lot of bulk. Other fabrics that would work really well for these trousers. So the ones I'm wearing are in a soft viscose, so something like that would be really great. Or a bamboo is another more sustainable option to viscose. You could also make them in a cotton if you wanted to make more of a kind of breezy summery pair. A linen as well, as long as it's not too much of a stiff linen, so quite a soft linen would work well for this. Or another alternative, if you want to make more of a glam evening pair, would be to use a satin or a silk. That would give a really gorgeous finish as well. If you're unsure about the fabric choice, you can always check in my instructions. I always give a full list of all the fabrics that I think will work best for the project. And another thing you can do is try what I did earlier. So get a little bit of the fabric, bunch or pleat it up, and then just check how much bulk it creates and you can make the decision that way and you can do that in the fabric shop as well before you buy. Next let's talk about the lining. So for this design you only need to use lining in the pockets if you're using a slightly heavier weight fabric. So the fabric that I'm using today, that chartreuse wool, is probably the heaviest type of fabric I would say to use for this project and by putting the lining into the pockets what it will do, it will just cut down on a little bit of that bulk, a little bit of that weight. Also, if you're making the full suit, which I'm going to be, it's nice to use the same lining that you're using in the jacket. So it all kind of ties in together and coordinates. If you're using a lighter weight fabric, so if you decided to go for a viscose or a satin or a cotton, then you can just use the same fabric that you're using for the outside of the trousers on the inside. So in the example that I'm wearing here in the viscose, so you can see the pockets are just exactly the same as the outside all the way through. Moving on to our interfacing or fusing as it's also known, we're going to be using that in the waistband of these trousers and we want it to be quite stiff for this project. Because the trousers are quite soft, it's quite a flowy design, having that stiff waistband it really adds the structure and it's what will end up giving the finished trousers that really nice polished tailored finish. And then finally you want to pick the ribbon or the tape that you're going to use for that drawstring at the back. So I'm going to use this really lovely burgundy grow grain but you could use a satin ribbon or any other kind of ribbon or tape as well. The best width for whatever ribbon you choose is one to one and a half inches. I'm going to use a one inch ribbon today. So to recap, fabric should be non-stretch, not too bulky and have a good drape, which means it's soft and flowy rather than stiff. Suitable fabrics include light to midweight cotton, soft linen, lightweight and lightweight suiting wool, viscose chalice, bamboo chalice, chambre, soft satin, and very lightweight velvet. Fabrics to avoid include heavy wools such as tweed or melton, heavy denim, canvas or linen, corduroy, heavy velvet, and anything that feels stiff, heavy, or thick. And additional materials needed for the project are a 4 by 20 inch rectangle of stiff iron-on interfacing, the woven type is best, 6 inches of 1 to 1 to a quarter inch wide flat elastic, and 80 inches of 1 to 1 and a half inch wide ribbon or tape. Project basics. And here's a quick run through of some project basics before we get started. To make the standard version of the trousers without lined pockets, skip step 5 of this tutorial and move straight from step 4 to step 6. Standard stitch is a straight stitch with a length of 2.5 millimeters unless otherwise stated. Seam allowance is one centimeter unless otherwise stated. 
I'll be using my serger to finish the raw edges of my seams throughout this tutorial, but if you don't have access to a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine to do exactly the same thing. Stopping fraying of the fabric edges and making your garment long lasting and durable. To finish your edges with zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine, set your stitch length to 2 and your stitch width to 5. Then sew right up to the raw edge of your fabric as shown in red on the diagram. So let's get started with the project. Step 1. Assemble sewing pattern. You can find the link to download in the description below. First, print out your pattern, being careful to print at 100% scale and checking the scale guide on the first page against your tape measure to be sure. Next, cut each page along the purple boundary lines as needed and stick the tiles together with tape or glue using the tile map in the instructions as a guide. Then cut each pattern piece along your chosen size and you'll have five pieces in total. Main leg, waistband, front pocket bag, back pocket bag and pocket lining. To make the version with standard pockets, you can discard the pocket lining piece. For the lined pocket version, cut the pocket bag pieces along the marked lines here. And finally, punch out the marked holes for the buttonhole on the main leg piece. Step two, pattern adjustments. The pattern is drafted to have a finished leg length of 38 inches from waist to trouser hem. You can use the length and shorten here line on the pattern to adjust the length as needed. To shorten the leg, draw a parallel line below the adjustment line. The distance between the lines should be the amount you want to shorten the trousers by. For example, a 3 inch distance for a 35 inch finished leg length. Mark the distance evenly along the line with a tape measure and join the markings with a ruler. Then fold the pattern, bringing the new line and the adjustment line to meet and tape into place. To lengthen the leg, cut the pattern line along the adjustment line and tape another piece of paper below it. Then draw a parallel line below the adjustment line on the new piece of paper. The distance between the lines should be the amount you wish to lengthen the trousers by. For example, a 4 inch distance for a 42 inch finished leg length. Mark the distance evenly along the line with a tape measure and join the markings with a ruler. Extend the grain line from the top of the pattern to meet the new line. Then stick the bottom part of the main leg pattern along the new line, matching the grain lines up to make sure the pattern remains straight. Draw lines to connect the sides of the pattern along the extension and cut down to size. The waistband for each size is adjustable on the finished garment, so no pattern adjustments should be necessary there. Step 3. Cut fabric. Make sure to iron your fabric first with plenty of steam, at an appropriate heat for your fabric type. As the main leg pattern piece is quite large, you will need to fold your fabric in half crosswise unless your fabric is 2 meters wide or over. Fabric folded crosswise looks like this, and fabric folded lengthwise looks like this. Lay your pattern pieces onto the fabric using the cutting lays in the instructions as a guide, and making sure the grain line on each piece runs parallel to the selvage. When you're happy with your lay, pin into place and cut out each piece as close to the edge of the pattern as possible. Take care to mark the notches on all your pieces and the buttonhole placement through the punch holes with chalk. Next, cut your lining if you're making the version with the lined pockets. There's just one pattern piece for this and you'll need two pairs. Take your interfacing and cut out a piece for your waistband. Then use some spare interfacing to cut two small rectangles to reinforce the buttonholes. These should be one and a half inches long by half an inch wide, with rounded corners for the nicest finish. Next, take your flat elastic and cut two three inch long strips. And finally, take the ribbon or tape that you're using for your ties and cut two 40 inch lengths. Step four, sew buttonholes. Take the small pieces of interfacing you cut earlier and iron them onto the main leg pieces on the wrong side of the fabric behind the buttonhole placement chalk marks. It's a good idea to mark a straight line between the two placement dots to use as a guide while sewing. You can construct the buttonholes either on your sewing machine or by hand. The settings for this will be specific to your own sewing machine, but the finished result should be a one and a quarter inch long buttonhole like this. After sewing, I always run a fray check glue down the center of the opening on both the front and back of the fabric to make the buttonhole more durable. I then leave the glue to dry while I continue sewing the rest of the project. Leave the buttonholes closed at this point to keep the main leg pieces more stable. 
We'll open them up later on, and if you're using a fray check glue, it will give it time to dry. Step five, attach pocket lining. If you're making the version with self-lined pockets, skip this stage and move straight to step six. If you're making the version with lined pockets, the first stage is to attach the pocket bag lining to the tops of the front and back pocket bags. Pin the top of each pocket bag to a pocket lining piece with the right sides together along the shorter curved edge. If you place your pins at right angles to the edge of the seam, you can leave them in while sewing for easier stitching. Then sew together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a 1cm seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Finish the raw edges of each seam either with a serger or with a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine and use your iron to press the seams flat. Now, with the facing lying flat to the table, the lining piece on top and the seam allowance to the right, flip the lining piece over the seam allowance to the right and sew a straight stitch onto the lining a couple of millimetres away from the join to attach the lining down to the seam allowance, pulling the two pieces of fabric apart as you go. This will secure the pocket lining down into place for a really neat finish. And finally, give each seam a press flat with your iron. Step six, attach pockets. Lay your main leg piece on the table right side up with the back of the trouser furthest away from you. You can find the back of the trouser by locating the buttonhole. Then take the front pocket bag piece and place it right side down on top of the main leg piece so that the double notch on the curve is facing towards the back of the trouser. Lay the pieces together around the U-shaped pocket opening and pin into place matching up at the notches. Starting with a back stitch, sew the seam around the edge of the U-shape with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5 and a 1cm seam allowance. Take extra care around the bottom of the curve and you may find it helpful to mark the stitch line with chalk first to give a smooth line to follow as you sew. When you get to the end of the front pocket bag piece, end with a back stitch. The bottom of the curve should look like this. Then carefully snip through the seam allowance at the bottom of the curve, being careful to cut close to the stitch line without cutting through the stitches. And snip a few more times in the same way until you can open the line of stitching out straight. This will help give a really nice shape at the bottom of the pocket opening. Then, with the main leg piece on the bottom, the front bag piece on top and the seam allowance to the right, flip the front pocket bag over the seam allowance so both the pocket bag and the seam allowance are laying to the right of the join. Sew the front pocket bag down to the seam allowance with a straight stitch a couple of millimetres away from the join in the fabric pulling the two sides of the fabric apart as you sew to get a nice clean finish. Take care as you go around the curve at the bottom not to pinch the fabric as this area can be a little tricky. When you get to the end of the front pocket bag piece, finish with a back stitch and the finished result should look like this. Now flip the front pocket bag piece inside to the back of the main leg piece and we're going to press the pocket opening into shape leaving a lap of a couple of millimetres so that the edge of the pocket bag can't be seen from the outside of the trousers. Press with your iron from the back first to make sure the lip is even. Then press again from the front using plenty of steam and pressure and protecting the fabric from shine if needed with either a pressing cloth or a scrap of the same fabric. And the finished result should look like this. Then to complete the pocket, take the back pocket bag piece and lay it right side down over the front pocket bag piece with the double notch facing towards the back of the main leg like this. Match up the notches around the curve of the front and back pocket bag pieces and pin them together. Then sew together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a 1cm seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Then seal the edge of the seam either with a serger or with a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. And finally, press the seam flat with your iron. Then repeat the process for the other leg. Step seven, set in pleats. Lay the main leg piece on the table with the right side facing up and the back of the trouser with the buttonhole furthest away from you. Then find the three notches at the top of the front of the trouser leg here. Bring the notch closest to you over the top to meet the notch furthest away with the middle notch in the middle of the fabric fold and pin it into place. Then flip the main leg piece to the back and pin the back of the pocket bag to the top of the front part of the trouser leg up until the start of the pocket opening, making sure everything is laying nice and flat. Add another pin going through the matched notch at the back of the pocket bag 
but taking care not to pin through the main leg fabric. Sew the pleat and pocket bag into place with a big straight stitch with a length of five, a five millimeter seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Then using the same stitch settings, sew from the back of the pocket bag up to the notch where we placed the pin. Through the main pocket bags only, avoiding the main leg piece. The pleat should now look like this from the front. Then repeat the process for the other leg. Step eight, prep trouser hem. Seal the raw edge at the bottom of each main leg piece with either a serger or a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Iron the edge finishing flat. Then with the wrong side of the main leg facing up, fold the edge over by three centimeters towards the inside of the trouser piece, pressing into place with the iron as you go. It's easier to prep the hem while the main leg piece is still flat and it will save time in the process later on. Step nine, sew inside leg seam. Lay your main leg piece on the table with the right side facing up and the back of the trouser with the buttonhole furthest away from you. Then fold the piece in half, bringing the front and back inseams to meet with the right sides of the fabric facing towards each other. Make sure the hem is unfolded at this point. Match the edges of the fabric exactly, pinning the top and the bottom first, and then matching and pinning the knee line notch in the middle. You'll find the back of the trouser will be slightly smaller than the front above the knee line notch here. This helps create a flattering hang at the front of the trousers and will stretch the back onto the front as we sew. Continue pinning along the seam as needed. Then sew the seam together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimeter seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Then seal the raw edge of the seam together either with a serger or with a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Press the seam flat with your iron, stretching the cloth slightly above the knee line notch. Then push the seam allowance towards the back of the trouser leg and press again from the front using a pressing cloth to prevent shine if needed. The front of the trouser has the pleat and the back has the buttonhole. Finally, repress the hem fold up where it meets the new seam. Then repeat the process for the other leg. Step 10, finish hem. I find this process is a little easier with the legs still separate, but you can also leave this step till last if you'd prefer to try on your trousers to check the length first. Pin the folded edge that we pressed into shape earlier into place the whole way around the bottom of each trouser leg. Then sew into place with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5 and a seam allowance of 2.5 centimeters from the folded edge. Start at the inseam with a back stitch and sew from the front of the trouser leg for the nicest finish. Keep sewing the whole way around the hem in a loop until you meet back where you started and end with a back stitch. Give the hem a really good press with your iron and repeat on the other leg. Step 11, sew crotch seam. Lay the two trouser legs on the table side by side with the right sides facing out and the fronts with the pleats facing up. We're now going to join the two legs together at the crotch seam. Start by bringing the back of the two legs to me at the waist where the buttonholes are. Pin the edges of the two pieces together making sure the right sides are facing and matching the notches as you go. Keep pinning, matching the edges and notches to work all the way around the curve to the front of the trousers. They should look like this pinned together. Then sew the seam together with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimeter seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. Finish the raw edge of the seam together with either a serger or a zigzag stitch on your regular sewing machine. Press the seam flat with your iron then push the seam allowance to one side and press again from the front, using a pressing cloth to prevent shine if needed. Step 12, waistband and drawstring. First, open up the buttonholes made at the beginning. Then fold the top edge of the back of the trousers above the buttonholes over by one centimeter towards the inside of the trousers and press the fold into place with your iron. Then fold over towards the inside of the trousers again to make a second fold of four centimeters and press into place with your iron. So the back of the trousers should now look like this. Now take your waistband piece and iron your interfacing to the back of it. 
I've also added a second piece of interfacing, two centimeters narrower than the waistband, down the center of my piece to make mine extra strong. Then fold over the two longer edges of the waistband by one centimeter towards the inside of the piece and press into place with your iron. Now fold the waistband in half with the right side facing out, bringing the two folded edges to meet with a small gap of about two millimeters between them and press the fold into shape with your iron. The small gap between the two folded edges is really important as it's key to finishing the waistband correctly later on. The shorter side of the waistband is the one we'll attach to the front of the trousers now. Lay the pieces on the table so the shorter side of the waistband is facing up with the front of the trousers right side up below it. Then flip the waistband down onto the front of the trousers so that the shorter folded edge is laying right side together with the top edge of the front of the trousers. Then open the fold and pin the raw edges together, matching the notch in the middle to the crotch seam, the notches at the ends to the notches inside the pockets, and adding more pins in between as needed. Then sew into place along the fold in the waistband with a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimeter seam allowance, and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. The waistband should now look like this when you flip it up. Next, take your two pieces of elastic and pin them to your two pieces of tape or ribbon with a two centimeter overlap. Sew them together with several lines of straight stitch through the overlap, forming a cross with your stitches to make it really secure. Then finish the ends of your drawstring by folding the ends of your tape or ribbon over twice, fixing in place with a pin, and sewing across the edge of the fold with a straight stitch. The finished result should look like this. We're now going to attach our front and back waistbands at the side seam here. With both the front and back waistbands unfolded, flip the two sides together so the edges meet and the right sides are facing. Then pin into place, matching at the top and the notches. We're now going to sew them together from the top up until the stitch line on the front of the waistband here. So using a straight stitch with a length of 2.5, a one centimeter seam allowance and a back stitch at the beginning and the end. It should now look like this and like this from the front. Next, we'll attach the ties to the waistband by fixing the elastic into the side seam on the front waistband here. Place the elastic over the lower half of the front waistband with the tape facing away from the trousers and the edge of the elastic two centimeters in from the edge of the waistband, so it overlaps the side seam by one centimeter and pin into place. Sew the elastic down with a straight stitch as close as possible to the stitch line we just made for the side seam, with a back stitch at the beginning and the end. It should now look like this, and then make a small snip into the seam allowance just in front of the side seam so the elastic can lay flat at a right angle. Now thread the ends of the ties through the buttonholes from the inside to the out, being careful not to twist the tape. We're now going to secure down the front waistband using a technique called stitch in the ditch, which means we'll sew from the front of the trousers, aiming for the stitches to fall in the ditch at the join between the top of the trousers and the waistband, while at the same time catching the lower edge of the back of the waistband with the stitches and fixing it into place, which is where the small gap we made when prepping the waistband earlier becomes really important to getting a neat finish. Make sure the front waistband is laying nice and flat from the outside and pin into place starting in the middle, close to the bottom of the waistband. Then add plenty of pins along the rest of the front waistband, making sure the tops of the pockets are tucked in nicely at the sides. Starting at the beginning of the pocket opening with a back stitch, use a straight stitch to sew as close as possible into the ditch at the bottom of the waistband. This can be a little tricky to get the hang of, so take your time, especially if this is a new technique for you. When you get to the end of the pocket opening, end with a back stitch. It should now look like this, and like this from the back with the stitches just a couple of millimeters in from the folded edge at the bottom of the waistband. Next, we're going to sew down the back waistband from the inside of the trousers with a straight stitch a millimeter or two in from the folded edge. First, secure the elastic firmly into the side seam of the waistband 
by flipping the back waistband over the front waistband to reveal the side seam. Then sewing through all the layers together as close as possible to the first line of stitches. Then flip the back waistband back over the elastic so it looks like this. Pin the back waistband down into place by first matching up the seam at the centre back and then making sure the end of the pocket and the elastic are tucked in nicely at the sides. It helps to mark the bottom of the one centimetre seam allowance at the top of the pocket with chalk to give you a guide to follow when tucking. Take care to tuck in all the layers neatly and that everything is laying nice and flat so it looks like this. Then pin along the length of the rest of the waistband. Taking care to keep the drawstring ribbon flat underneath the fold and out of the way of the seam. Starting at the stitch line on the back of the front waistband, sew along the bottom of the back waistband with a straight stitch, starting with a back stitch, a millimetre or two away from the folded edge. Keep sewing until you meet the stitch line at the other side of the front waistband and end with a back stitch. The finished result should look like this from the outside and like this from the inside. Finally, give the whole waistband a really good press with your iron, using plenty of steam and pressure and using a pressing cloth to prevent shine if needed. Thanks so much for watching. If you're sewing along at home, I hope you have an amazing new pair of trousers in front of you right now and you're feeling super proud of yourself. I would love to see how your trousers turned out. So please make sure to tag me in any photos if you're sharing online. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at Sasha underscore underscore Starlight. And you can also use the hashtag Starlight Palazzos for this project. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like, and I will be bringing out lots more patterns, tutorials, sewing and fashion content over the next few weeks. So do make sure to subscribe to my channel to be the first to hear about that. So I've been a sewing and pattern cutting teacher for many years but I'm pretty new to teaching in this kind of video format so if you do have any feedback that you'd like to give me that would be so helpful if there's anything that you really loved or if there's anything that you'd like explained in a little bit more detail then do let me know in the comments I will be releasing a pattern and tutorial for the matching jacket that I'm wearing here if you'd like to make the full set but for now I hope your new trousers bring you all the joy for many years to come and I'll see you next time.